Hi, I'm Kyle Moquin. I'm going to give you my input on what I think are the top 10 World War II movies of all times. Now, some of these uh, movies you're not going to totally agree with me or at all, but there's some sentimental uh, movies that I feel as though are, are closer to my heart than other movies that may be a little bit done better production-wise and so forth. But uh, here are my top 10, starting from the worst to the top. Coming in at number 10, The Longest Day, or what I call The Longest Movie. It's a very uh, factual, detailed movie that uh, came out in 1961. Uh, it's about the D-Day landings at Normandy and the days uh, preceding the landings. It's uh, very detailed and each has a storyline about the different types of uh, soldiers that are going in, the paratroopers and the army guys and the navy guys and so forth. Um, it's uh, pretty well done for its time. The, the, the effects are pretty good. The acting is excellent. Tons of, tons of stars in it. But uh, it's again, it's a kind of long movie. It kind of gets drawn out at times, but it's, uh, it's still a classic. Number nine is Father Goose. Now, many of you have probably even heard of Father Goose. It's, uh, it came out in 1964. It's got one of my favorite all-time actors, Cary Grant, when men were men. Um, this movie uh, is about this American who uh, leaves the United States at the outbreak of World War II, and he resides in the South Pacific near Australia. And somehow, through hijinks, he gets coerced into being an island watcher for the Australian... Uh, Navy. Um, while he's on the Navy, they uh, sabotage the Australians sabotage their boat, so he's stuck on the island with only a radio, some provisions, and a case of whiskey to keep him motivated to uh, keep an eye out for the Japanese. He uh, he gets this call. He has to go rescue uh, a fellow island watcher that's a nearby island, but he gets there. The guy's dead, and except there's a uh, group of girls that have been. Um, transplanted away from where the Japanese or Japanese took over their island and uh, so he has to take care of these uh, seven girls and the school marm. Coming in at number eight, the Battle of Britain. Uh, it was made in 1969 and it leads up to all the events that led to the Battle of Britain. Um, it was a major air battle as we know, as people may not know. Uh, the Germans and the British really didn't fight hand to hand. It was c clearly the Germans uh, trying to bomb the Britons into submission before they could invade Britain itself. Um, the aerial photography between the two planes fight, the planes fighting, uh, is timeless. It still stands up to today. Um, the first time I saw this movie was in 1974, five years later. I was nine years old and being the son of a World War II uh, combat veteran in the, Air, in the Army Air Corps, uh, this movie really struck home with me. Number seven is the Battle of the Bulge. And though uh, this movie is based on facts, historically the uh, events really didn't take place. Um, it comes from the German and American side. The German leader is uh, based upon um, this uh, SS guy. His name was uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jochen Piper, a real badass, uh, accused of many ca uh, atrocities against Americans. The other part is the, led by the Americans is Henry Fonda. Uh, again, the special effects were really horrible. The movie was made in 1965. In fact, even though the battle, the, the real battle of the Bulge took place in the Ardennes Forest in Belgium, there's uh, scenes of tanks battling in the desert. So uh, go from there. The storyline is, uh, is pretty good. Uh, the, the actors are awesome. Number six, Wind Talkers. Uh, it's a movie with Nicolas Cage and uh, Michael Beach. Uh, Michael Beach is a, uh, a uh, Navajo Indian and that they're using the Navajo um, dialect as a code. Nicolas Cage is a Marine who has to protect him and the code um, at any cost. Uh, awesome epic battles where uh, in the South Pacific where not too many uh, movies show just the blood and guts that went on in those uh, islands and just how uh, those uh, Marines were fighting from island to island. Um, this is a classic telltale movie of uh, what a soldier should do as opposed to what he has to do. Um, so, great movie, very exciting. Check it out. Coming in at number five, Enemy at the Gates. 
The opening scene, uh, scene in this movie is a real eye catcher. Uh, the Russians are crossing the River Volga to get from one part of Stalingrad to the other part of Stalingrad where the Germans are invading. And uh, the boat that's cro helping them cross the river is being attacked by uh, German Stuka dive bombers, shredding the, uh, the uh, boats to pieces. And when some of the soldiers are trying to jump off to, to swim back to shore, their own men are shooting them. So uh, it's a pretty intense scene, and pretty much the whole movie is like that. Uh, basically, it boils down to is a dramatic battle between a German sniper versus the hot shot young Russian sniper. Um, the scenes are very uh, realistic and it's actually based on a true story. So uh, this movie is very exciting, goes quick, and uh, will leave you surprised at the end. Number four on Kyle Moquin's list of uh, top ten World War II movies is Midway. Now, Midway came out in 1977, was the first movie that was produced in surround sound. And with the opening uh, scene, has American bombers taking off from a carrier. And I can remember that the theater actually shook for the first time in my life. Uh, it was very realistic. The movie takes the perspective of both uh, American and Japanese leaders and leading up to the Battle of Midway, which happened to be a turning point. Pretty, you know, up to that time, the Japanese were uh, kicking ass and taking names, and Americans were able to uh, break the Japanese code. Um, both uh, sides did some very uh, hard planning and trying to uh, take this uh, little island in the middle of the Pacific. But uh, as luck holds out, um, the Americans were able to find the Japanese carriers first and uh, pretty much wiped them out and uh, put everything back into the swing of American back in 1942. Number three, A Bridge Too Far. Uh, this movie depicts the factual... Uh, account of the failed Allied uh, mission called Market Garden. It was uh, hopes that the, by dropping American paratroopers behind enemy lines um, that they would be able to crush the Germans and end the war sooner. Well, we failed miserably even though um, a bunch of great actors in it such as uh, Robert Redford, um, what's his name, Ryan? O'Neill. Yeah, Ryan O'Neill. Uh, Michael Caine, um, a host of others, Gene Hackman. All-star cast. Even with all that all-star cast, they still couldn't win this battle. Two on the list, Saving Private Ryan. Uh, the storyline was good, not great, but the opening scene was effing phenomenal. It showed a uh, true life action of how it really was when the uh, Americans uh, stormed the beaches at Normandy. Very realistic and uh, probably one of the greatest scenes ever, as far as war movies go, was in that first scene. Now coming in at the number one movie that Kyle Moquin happens to think is the best movie is uh, my sentimental favorite, Patton. Now a lot of people are going to say, Patton! But uh, this movie came out in 1970. I remember it as a five-year-old going to the theaters. Now granted, I don't remember the whole movie, but I remember it was a big deal. And uh, this movie basically uh, shows the life and times of uh, uh, General Patton, a controversial general throughout World War II. And uh, you know, the battle scenes are excellent for its time. The storyline is awesome. Acting was awesome. And uh, even though he was a controversial general, he slaughtered his own men to win battles. He slapped some more slots over. Even though he slapped around, this guy was so shell shocked. Uh, things were clear. The Nazis were terrified of facing that. And uh, he was instrumental in winning World War II. And that's it. Now, you, you can agree, disagree, whatever. I really don't give a fuck. I'm going to drink some Jim Beam and Coke. Adios.